So, you've finally made it to the fishbowl, have you? The what? That's what we call the box office. An insider joke between cashiers. Oh. So, you've made it. I guess. Mr. Bob said he wanted you to train me how to work in the box office. Then let the training begin. People come up. They say what movie they want to watch. You press this button. Take the money. Give them the ticket. And there. All trained. Now what? Now sit down and wait. But don't get anxious. No one's coming tonight. It's Christmas Eve and all of our movies suck. This beats working at Nest Soaps. Thank God I didn't get stuck with that job. That would suck. Stuart's certainly loving it though. Have you seen the look in his eyes when he's working there? What do you mean? He usually smiles and treats the lower workers with respect. But his eyes, they're lit like a power-hungry madman. I think he pictures himself as some Egyptian pharaoh who whips the backs of his slaves just to make some extra money. Really? I hadn't noticed. He told me you guys went to grade school together. Are you guys dating? Why do you ask? He told me you were, but you wanted to keep quiet. If I was dating someone, why would I want to keep it quiet? Um, maybe because Stuart is a kind of nerd. So you did go to school together? We met in P5. You know how every class has a kid that gets picked on by everybody? That was him. No one liked him. Why was that? Well, it started out because he was a new kid. His family just moved to set up a new church. Husband and wife ministers or something. Very friendly, but kind of creepy at the same time. I've met them. I know. Anyways... Kids picked on him because he was new and a little weird looking. I can't tell it as much, but his face was completely covered with freckles. Big brown freckles. Kind of like someone flicks blushes of paint at him. I always liked those freckles. I thought they were kind of cute. Also, he would start talking about Jesus wherever he could, writing a book report on the Bible, making a crown of thorns at the art class, he also tried making Noah's Ark out of clay, but it blew up in the oven. Then, one day we were told to give a speech of a country of our choice. He picked Israel. Well, that's not so bad. He did the speech in a foreign language. Really? I had an uncle who would change the language mid-sentence. But he had one of those robot voices. It was really low and scary. Like Darth Vader speaking Pig Latin. Stuart wasn't entertaining, and to top it off, the kids started to hate him more because he wanted to be the teacher's pet. That doesn't surprise me. He kisses up to all the managers. It was the same with the school teachers, and the lunch lady, and the headmaster. Most kids said he would tell tales. There was one bully who spat in his hair right in the middle of the class. Oh please, I just ate some popcorn. I felt sorry for Stuart, so I let him hang around me at lunchtime. He was okay, but he never left my side. I got beaten up a couple of times just for sticking up for him. Are you two still friends? I guess, but not like back then. I was surprised to see him when I got the job. His parent put him around some private school around P7. So, the rumours are true. What rumours? I heard voices from the girls' changing room. You pervert. Well, they were talking so loud I couldn't help it. Okay, Dork. What did you hear? That you're not interested in Stuart anymore, and what were the words? You're almost done playing with him. Well, that makes me sound kind of cruel. So? So? Just me, you, and the fishbowl. Why should I talk about my love life? What about you? I bet you've had a lot of girlfriends. Probably broken a lot of hearts. Not really. I've never been in love. Just casual dates and stuff. I'm pretty much like the other geeks you've been describing. Well, you have to understand. I'm the kind of girl who takes pity on poor pathetic geeks who've never kissed a girl. Let's just say that I like someone who is easily trainable. Someone who will truly appreciate me. It's sad, I know. But hey, I'll take an ego boost wherever I can get one. Unfortunately, these adorable nerdy boyfriends get boring after a while. I mean, I can only listen to their computer games and mathematic equations for so long. Of course, Stuart's different in a lot of ways. He's terrible at maths, for one. 
and he's pretty clueless about technology. But he's a comic book sort of geek, and a hopeless romantic. He's preoccupied with holding my hand. Everywhere we go, he wants to hold hands, even when we're driving. And he's got this new pastime. He keeps saying, I love you. It was so sweet and wonderful the first time he said it. I almost cried, and I'm not the kind of girl who cries easily. But by the end of the week, he must have said I love you about 500 times. And then he starts adding pet names. I love you, honey bunch. I love you, sweetheart. I love you, my little smoochy woochy coochie coo. I don't even know what that last one means. It's like he's speaking in some brand new love-infected language. Who would have thought romance could be so boring? Is it boring? You mean you don't know? So, you're done with school? Since last summer. Sweet, sweet freedom. Now what? College, I guess. I'm taking a year off before I return to captivity, though. Did your friends already go? Friends? I hated everyone in high school. Hey, me too. I hope working would improve my social life. <laughs> hey, has it? I have met some cool people like you. Like me? Yep. Others like Rico. Oh. Is that bad? No, Rico's cool. I just wouldn't trust him with much more than a postage stamp. Thanks for the warning. I used to want a social life, but I think I'm content here, in the fishbowl. If you want to see people, just wait till Friday night. They'll swarm around you, begging you for tickets. But the glass on the fishbowl keeps them at bay. If you want to talk to someone, you just pick up the phone, and when you get sick of talking, you can just hang up. You can read a book, do your homework, or watch people go by. You can even steal snacks from the shop, and on hot days we've got air conditioning. If you're bored, you can spin around on this thing. Wow, you're pretty cool. My record is eight rotations, all thanks to 12 years of ballet. Really? Yeah. Hey. What was your present from the school Christmas party? A flower pet. I got the worst possible present ever. Listen to this. I'm in this dance group, right? Ballet. I've been doing the Nutcracker for the past two months, having nightmares of the Sugar Plum Fairy Sweet. Every shop has been playing Tchaikovsky for weeks. I can't get away from that godforsaken music. It drives me crazy. And guess which CD Miss Jane buys me? The Nutcracker. I had no idea she could be so cruel. Do you think it's possible to travel through time? I don't think so, but maybe someday. What would you do if they discovered how to do it? I don't know, but maybe I'll travel back to find my great-grandfather and say hello. And what do you do? Uh, well, if you had a time machine, say they invented it when I'm really old, like when I'm 35 or something, then I'd travel back to right now and give myself advice. What kind of advice? Who to be friends with, who to avoid, what choices to make, what guys to like, that sort of thing. Why do you need a time machine? Just make the right choice now. But how do you know if it's the right choice? You don't know until afterwards. Well, that's the point. You take a chance, you either have a good time, or you learn from your mistakes. And what if you don't like it? Well, you don't like it. I think not knowing what happens next is part of the fun. Really? Yep. Come here then. So? So? Did you like that experience? Well, a little. What about you? Oh, Stuart. Um, how's it going? Oh, hey Stuart. Joshua and I were just talking about regrets. What do I have to regret? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all.